please welcome Lindy and Rebecca to the stage. Let's give them an applause. It's a very, very, very special day. It's a very, very, very special day. It's a very, 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 very special day. You guessed it. It's a special day because you are here. And that's a very special song by one of my favorites, Mr. Fred Rogers, who wrote over 200 very simple, very special songs for children of all ages. And you know what else makes today very special? Today is National Dialogue and Diversity Day. And I can't think of any more special way than to be here at the Founders District spending it with you. Let me lay out the roadmap for today's session. First, you will hear my, from my compadre, my sister from another mister, my friend, and third place 2020 world champion, Lindy McLean, who will dissect and put back together her award-winning speech, helping you understand how she started with narration and infused dialogue to get her to the world stage. Then I'm going to bring a different flavor of characters encouraging you to think outside the box and maybe come to a Toastmasters meeting, show up as general evaluator, table topics master, or maybe as a speaker in full costume and character to bring your passions to life through character and dialogue. You will be receiving a handout. We'll give you that at the very end, touching on some of the salient points that you will hear today. Oh, and before we get started, here's what I'd love, here's what Lindy and I would love to hear from you in the chat. If you wouldn't mind sharing, what is one thing that you're hoping to take away from this morning's session? And I'd love to see that in the chat, if you wouldn't mind letting your fingers do the talking. And Lindy, I'll have you come on stage now and maybe you can read that out and then start with your session. Please welcome Lindy McLean. Thank you. I am thrilled to be here. I'm looking at the chat and it's not moving. So I will go ahead and talk and then uh, interrupt myself later. I am excited to share with you the tool that has been most transformative for me most has elevated most, me most, in moving from beginning speaker to being able to be on the world stage in 2020. When I say narrative and dialogue, some of you will have a very clear idea of what I mean. Narrative is description. If you open a book, it's all those parts that do not have quotation marks by them. On the other hand, dialogue does have quotations. In a book, moving from narrative to dialogue, is a way of adding variety. And on the stage, you're moving from description to actual demonstration and actual dramatization. That's your goal. Because when you begin a speech, people are sitting back waiting to see what you have to say. And you want a way to have people lean in right away and to get excited about what's going on to be able to relate to you. Ooh, my camera's having little fits this morning, too early in the morning for it. They, you want to be able to engage people right away. This is the main point of character dialogue is engagement and brevity, because that's the other challenge you have. As Toastmasters, you're about to watch your contest. There's nothing more heartbreaking than having an amazing contestant go boop, one second too late and get disqualified. Having ways to be able to take that enormous, wonderful idea of yours and get it down into 700 words or less is an art. That's, that's the what of narration, the why, and now we're going to go into the how. As I said, narration is usually in past tense. So that's the first place you start is changing from past tense to present tense. You want the audience to experience what you're describing as if it's happening before their eyes. For instance, in the contest speech I'm using this year, I begin with a story about being nine. And instead of saying, when I was nine years old, this happened. I'm nine years old, sitting at my grandparents' dining room table. 
And from there, I had to look at my choice of language because I wanted to say mouth-watering aromas fill the air. But guess what? My nine-year-old would not say that. It gives you a chance to look at whatever age of yourself or someone else that you're talking about and how would they be talking? How would they be thinking? Choice of language. Then you get to infuse dialogue. Now, it's not all dialogue. I'm not saying you change everything because haven't you ever read a book that had more than one page of dialogue together? That's too much, right? You're reading it and you're saying, now who's talking? I can't tell. On screen, on stage, I do maybe two, perhaps three characters at a time, but I don't do it more than that. I wouldn't recommend it because it will only lead to confusion among your viewers. Who is that talking? Who is now? There are tips to be able to tell who is talking. One is using the name of the person that you're addressing. Lindy, mom, before you say the line, and that helps. All right, I'm going to demonstrate by using my 2020 winning speech, as Rebecca said. And first I will do it as a narrative. I wanna say that whenever we write speeches, it comes out in narrative the first time. It comes out in narrative. It comes out chronologically. It comes out a mess, mind you. And it's afterwards that you get to go back and edit it and make some of these artful changes. It doesn't happen at first. To say just a few words about what that speech was about, it's called Your Buried Story, in case you weren't in Toastmasters or weren't tuned into the World Championship, which is perfectly fine. And your buried story is that story that you never tell anyone because you're afraid of what people might think if you told it. And then it's about the magic that can happen when you actually do tell it. In this speech, I talk about having been in Peru as a 16 year old for a year as an exchange student, having returned home and due to circumstances, having lost touch entirely with my family. As the years passed, that became my buried story because I got more and more ashamed of the fact that I had lost touch. And mind, this is a long time ago. It's before the digital age. We didn't have the ways of tracking people that we now do with such facility. So I'd lost touch. Then came Toastmasters in which we have an opportunity to tell stories, many stories. And as we look for content, what are we gonna talk about for this speech? I eventually began to talk about my year in Peru. And here's where I begin. My Peruvian family came alive in my mind. There was my Peruvian mother. Now she, she had this alarming habit. You see, she bragged about me in public. I'm from the Midwest, from the United States Midwest, where we never brag about anything. Anyone from the Midwest? Anyone know what I'm talking about? Never. She did it about uh, her other children too, not just me, but I found it both horrifying and delicious at the same time. Then there was my Peruvian father, kind of a philosopher cowboy, thick glasses, a rather serious, and I could always count on him to keep me on the straight and narrow when it came to my language skills. There were four children, Mighty Lu, who was 13, 13 is a lot younger than 16 where I was. And she seemed to have my no her nose in my business all the time. She wanted to know what song lyrics from the United States meant. And usually they were lyrics that I did not care to translate. But she was lots of fun, the life of the party. Then there was Dante, age 12. He was cuter than a button, quiet, but with a sparkle in his eye. Then there was Talia, who was six years old. She was like a force of nature. She wanted to be center stage. She had that kind of energy. She, and she resented the fact that I was taking up airspace in the family. Then there was baby Gonzalito, who was one and a half years old, just learning to walk. Now, everyone, tell me, how long do you think that was? Go ahead and put it in the chat. Oh, my chat feature isn't working. I wonder, is chat turned on? Let me ask the Zoom master. I don't see that, that or maybe it's just me. Anyway, oh, here we go. Somebody guessing, three minutes, all right. 
Yes, it seems long. Last time I did this, someone said four or five minutes. It seems really long. If you were wondering, when is she gonna stop talking about these family members? You weren't alone. I was wondering that too. In actuality, yes, it was probably a minute 45 or two minutes, something like that. Now let's take it to the dialogue version. My Peruvian family came alive in my mind. My Peruvian mother. Meet my American daughter. She sings soprano and she dances ballet. Then there were my Peruvian father. Lindy, buenos dias. No, buenos dias. Marilu, dance Lindy para bailar la bamba. Talia, age six. And Dante, age 12, with a sparkle in his eye that could drill the, that could conquer the world. Talia at six would express her affection for me as only a six-year-old can. Baby Gonzalito, one and a half years old, big brown eyes, just learning to walk. Okay, in spite of the hiccups, how long do you think that was? Yeah, about 55 seconds, something like that. Yes. So it was, it's cutting in half. It's a substantial change to actually do that. It's essentializing. It's taking just the inner nature of what you need to portray to get the character across. Okay, so that's the what, why, and how. It takes time to do this. It takes attention and it takes practice. I want to acknowledge that. Now let's move on to those four Ps. Rebecca, can you come on screen and, and show those if you would spotlight the Rebecca alongside me, we, they, I can show the four Ps at the same time. The four Ps of character persona are posture, pitch, position, and purpose. Posture is how they hold themselves. You know, someone who stands like this is different from someone who stands like this. Then it's not just how you stand, it's your gestures, it's your facial expressions. It's any nervous tics. Maybe there's a habit that they have of, you know, all, all coming back and doing something again and again. You know, we all have little things that identify us as ourselves. That's all part of what we're calling posture or body language. Pitch, vocal variety. How fast, how slow, how high, how low. And then there's adding accents because that can be part of how you differentiate someone from yourself. When you're telling a story, you have creative license. So if you cannot do it with your own voice with ease, think about adding an accent. No one in your audience will know that person didn't have that kind of an accent. Position is really about where on the screen the other person is because the mechanics of dialogue in character are, let me talk for just a moment about that. When we're as speakers, we engage straight on with the camera and that is how we engage people. And that's really important for connecting. When you move into character, it's like moving on stage where there's a fourth wall where the characters are not aware of the audience. There's of course, lots of times to break rules but that's in general the rule. So your characters would not look at the camera. They look at each other to do that you turn about 45 degrees and you focus if they're shorter, down, if they're taller, up or straight on. And then you do the opposite when you're turning around. So all you do is pivot your feet a tiny bit and move your eyes from the same point to the same point. So that's the position part. And this really applies only to if you are doing more than one character yourself. In the exercise that we're going to do later where you have working with someone else, that's not as as uh, important always. So then we move up, move on to purpose. This is why do you bring another character into a speech? They have different purposes. What is their role in driving the story forward? Hero, you're usually the hero yourself. Are they your antagonist? Are they the one who drives you forward? Are they the person who criticizes you and sends you on your journey? Maybe they're the guide. For instance, in my latest speech, I chose a friend to give the advice. Now, here's a, here's a tip for a winning speech. When you get to that piece of wisdom that your speech offers, it's good to have it come from not you, 
but from someone else. It's just more powerful that way. It's more humble that way, not just because I'm from the Midwest. I learned this from someone who was not from the Midwest. So think about bringing a guide in to give that little juicy piece of advice. Or maybe they're just a witness to the hero's growth, but they do have a role and they have a purpose in driving things forward. To talk more about the purpose, now I get to bring my compatriot, Rebecca, on screen. She's my favorite person to laugh with. Please welcome Rebecca P. Murray. Thank you, Lindy, and thank you for those four Ps. And as we said, you will be receiving a handout with all of those four Ps that we'll share at the end. Now we're going to focus on really getting outside the box, thinking outside the box. All these skills that Lindy shared about how to infuse characters into a speech take time, take practice, and there's no more better, safer way place than Toastmasters to do this. And while we were all in lockdown during the pandemic is when I started pushing myself out the comfort zone. I would turn my camera off and come back as table topics master, general evaluator, as different characters just to try it. And it is scary. I could feel my heart beating like crazy before I came on because I had no idea how people would think of this if they would be attracted to it, they thought it was funny, if they might be even offended by it. I had no idea. But again, it's, a, it's all an experiment and we're here to get feedback from each other and grow. What I will be sharing next with you is a compilation of characters that I use in my, I've used in the Toastmaster world and also in my professional speaking and what I call edutaining. I love just shaking it up a little bit and, and presenting the unexpected, the big surprise and hopefully with a big laugh and memorable. So here's a little compilation. And then what we'll do is I'm going to go through one character at a time. There are about six of them here and, and tell you the purpose behind each of these. Let me cue that video up for you. And here we go. Listen, listen, uh, what are you doing later tonight? I'm, I'm gonna be busy. <laughs> Cause Braggy is a girl's best friend. Brag girl. What's happening here? Oh, what's going on? What's going on? Maybe it's on this piece of paper here. Hmm. Oh, grocery list. No. All right, maybe it's farther down. My name is Brenda Sue. How do you do? Now, I know you're all expecting Rebecca tonight, but she's a little bit busy in the dressing room, so she asked me to come out here and warm y'all up. Is that all right? You need warmed up? The smoke cleared, the figure appeared, and she said, never fear. Actually, she said, don't be afraid, but that didn't rhyme. Well, hopefully I'll see you around. I'm going to go back into the closet. I'm going back into the closet. My goodness, she's become pushy in her old age. Goodbye. Oh my goodness. Well, hello. Now I know you have your cameras off, but I can see you anyway, because my name is Mrs. Kia, spelled K-I-A, stands for know it all, and yes, I do. And today, Rebecca has asked me because she says she's not very good at math, but don't let it erode your confidence, Rebecca. Rule number one, you're not good at everything. Buy a calculator. I'm kind of a ladies' man, you know, the aqua velveta kind of man. Uh, did I have a new girlfriend? Would you like to know about my new girlfriend, Doreen, everybody? Yeah, Doreen, Doreen has this thing for amusement parks, okay? So we go to this amusement park. We're on the big roller coaster. We call that the Big Dipper. She's screaming her head off, ah, ah. We get off the ride and she goes, Dave, WTF. I say, Doreen, what are you saying? She says, 
wasn't that fun? Oh, Doreen, you had me worried there for a second. There we go. Now, if you were felt yourself uh, being attracted to one of those characters, would you mind sharing that in the chat? We have everything from the old woman at the beginning to Disco Dave. That was the character at the end. And, and I have to tell you, he, he really is a lady's favorite. That's He's not joking about that at all. Let me go back to, okay, Annie Oakley. I want to see more of Annie Oakley. That's what Lindy, yes, Miss Know-It-All. I like Mrs. Kia. You know, men, especially, it's funny, love Mrs. Kia, Mrs. Know-It-All. She's part of a, as you'll see here, some of those characters are part of a one-woman show that I have, and I bring them all together. Let me share this back here again. Oh, present, present, present. There we go. I'm using Canva. Anybody use Canva for slides? It's, um, it looks very beautiful. And let me go here. Yes. Okay. So the first one, this is Mrs. Minnie Cooper. And she, this was obviously on stage. This is pre-pandemic. I was the producer of this huge show in our county for Rob Martin. He was retiring after 40 years of running this nonprofit. So I was the one in charge, putting my Toastmasters skills to use, engaging the MC, engaging all the speakers, writing the introductions for everybody, working with the tech team, doing all of that behind the scenes. And I wanted to do this it's your life, Rob Martin, and then have these people come on one at a time while he's sitting on the stage and talk to Rob directly and to the audience to tell stories about Rob and how he was transformative in their lives. And I thought, now, wouldn't it be funny to surprise everyone? And the only one who was clued into this was the MC to surprise everyone with Rob's made up fifth grade teacher, Mrs. Minnie Cooper, who comes sort of wandering out on the stage and just does a little improv dialogue with everybody just to mix things up at the very end. And I have to tell you, when, when you're doing things like this for the first time, second time, third time, fourth time, it really doesn't matter. The doubt comes in hard, fast, and strong. Things like, no one's going to find this funny. Play it safe. Do not do this. This will ruin your reputation in this county. Nobody had ever seen me do anything like this before because I was always the one backstage. The day before, so this, the, the events on a Thursday night, there'll be 350 people there in this beautiful auditorium. I put it off until the day before, and that's when I want, went and bought those baggy pantyhose, the chain for the glasses, I went to the Goodwill and bought some clothes and I told myself, you know what, you're just going to do this. It's risky. Yes, but you're doing it for you. You're doing it for you. And that's my big message for you tonight. When you have these ideas, again, this was a little risky in front of 350 people, most of whom I didn't know. But in Toastmasters, it's not risky. It's not risky. The only risk you have is not jumping in to the opportunity that flies into your head. So let's take a look at the next one here. Marilyn Monroe, she made her first appearance last November. This was a professional setting. It was a virtual workshop that we did on helping people use their voice to elevate themselves and others. So it was basically, we called it a brag girl workshop. It was for women in manufacturing in, in Texas. So we, I put this, I facilitated this entire workshop breakout rooms. And then again, I wanted to do something kind of special at the end. So I, I, I'm a parody songwriter. I rewrote the words to diamonds are a girl's best friend to bragging are, are bragging is a girl's best friend. I recorded it and I streamed it. And while it was being streamed, I put on my wig and I came as Marilyn to the meeting. And then, of course, you know, Marilyn's famous. It was the sponsor's birthday. And, you know, Marilyn has that famous birthday song that, that she sang to President Kennedy. So she had everybody singing happy birthday to the sponsor. And that's why we had the cupcake swag and, and all of that. So, you know, when you 
when you commit to a character full on, full on, leaving the doubt at the door, that's when your audience can engage with it too. And you notice this also, speaking of Mr. Rogers, how effective he was with the puppets, all the puppets that he had. And I, when I'm around a good puppeteer, you, and you see this with children too, right? The puppeteer vanishes and the only thing that's real is the, is the puppet. That is, that is what our mind sees as real. This is the same for you. When you commit 100% and you infuse what Lindy talked about with, you know, what posture, how does this person speak? Do they have an accent? How do they, how do they walk? How do they talk? How do they bring themselves forward? And of course, I love the whole costume, wigs and all of that. Very inexpensive on Amazon, by the way. Next character here. Brenda Sue. Brenda Sue opened for me last year at my District 2 presentation at our conference just to, just to switch things up a little bit. So she, she came, she, instead of Rebecca Murray, when they, when they, they announced or um, when they read, read the introduction for Rebecca Murray, when the camera came on, it was Brenda Sue. And she tapped into what some of the other speakers had talked about and was engaging the audience, warming them up. And the whole session was on engagement. It was how to create an engagement plan for your presentations. And then she goes and gets Rebecca and Rebecca comes, then, then I come on. And that's what's kind of cool about this virtual space of ours because we can leave as one character, take off the wig, um, take off the jacket and come back as another or come back as ourselves. You know, it's just a really awesome way to keep your audience uh, on the edge of their toes and leaning in and listening and learning from you. Next, this gal, there was a district down south who was holding a Western night and inviting speakers from, from all around the world to come with a Western story. And I thought, Western story, I've never done anything in that realm ever. But I, so I went, I went, I Googled uh, famous women in Western history. And I started looking at like, Calamity Jane, all these different women. And I thought, oh, Annie Oakley, she sounds fascinating. Went to Amazon, bought a couple of books, read all about her. And I brought her to the meeting through this character whose name is Campfire. She's the Campfire Queen, Reba, the Campfire Queen. So she tells a story about sitting around a campfire with her, with uh, Jimmy Dean and and friend, other friends from history. And this uh, figure rose from the ashes and it was Annie Oakley. And then Annie comes and tells her story. So, so think about this for you. Who in history inspires you? Who in history have you spent time learning about or would you like to learn about? And what better way to bring history to life than through, through that character, him or her self? Try that. Instead of talking about a character, becoming the character and letting your audience learn about that character through your character. Next, we have shame. Now, raise, put a yes in the chat if you know this woman in your life. Shame, 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 shame. You know this gal? I know her very, very well. She... <laughs> She used to spend a lot of time up here. And, you know, I, I really feel like it was the pandemic that helped me get in touch with why she is here and lock her in the closet. So that's why she says at the end, I'm going to go back into the closet where we want to keep her with a lock securely on the door. So she is also a metaphor and part of my one woman show. And she's, she's absolutely hilarious though. I kind of, she's the woman you'd love to hate. In an ideal world, we'd say, okay, bring your speech and let's work on changing it from narrative to dialogue. But that is way too time consuming, not something that we can actually manage in this session. So we thought to ourselves now, how can we give you a chance to practice characters and some of these four Ps? And so we decided that we will do give you the opportunity 
so to do some scenarios, some improv scenarios. What we will do, we will give you a name, a place, and what's going on. And you'll volunteer two at a time. We'll spotlight you together and you'll have at it. Now, you know things about improv, I know down here. So we won't talk too much about that. But let me ask on a scale of one to 10, 10 being awesome, how good of a listener are you? Thinking, thinking. How good of a listener are you? Rebecca says six. All right. <laughs> Terry, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> Let me give you the invitation to turn your camera on at this point. Let's go ahead and have some interaction. Let's have you present here with us. This is not just a spectator sport. Okay. All right. All right. So with that question, how many of you have room for improvement in your listening skills? There's always room to get better, right? Yeah, for sure, for me. Now, listening is the first ingredient of improv. The next ingredient is collaboration. And the third is being willing to build a new reality through creativity. When these ingredients of listen, affirm, and build come together, they allow humans to think outside of the box, like Rebecca does, and engage in powerful ways. Listening, affirming, and building provides the foundation of everything we'll do next. I have an idea, Rebecca, to call on a couple of folks who I know have some experience with this. May I introduce the first one, or do you want to go ahead? Yes, please do. Okay. So, Judy Sadler, I have your permission. Judy Stein, I don't, but are you willing to do that, or are you going to shake your head? Okay, somebody else willing? Terry, you're smiling. Terry Black, you want to come on? It's very safe. It's very safe. We will set you up for success. We promise. <clears throat> Jeff DeVore. Come on, Jeff. Okay. How bad can it be? Exactly. It's going to be great. All right. So uh, who, who have we got? We've got Judy Sadler. We want to, um, could you use a rate, raise your hand feature in the bottom. So then we can, uh, the zoom master can easily find you in the list. There we go. Great. Awesome. Terry. Hi, Judy. Okay. So we have our volunteers here. All right. I am going to switch the expected. Judy Sadler, you are a puppy named Sadie. You're a four month old lab. You're new to the home. You like to play with anything that moves or that doesn't, including your own tail. The cat, Boris, that's you, Terry, doesn't appreciate your antics and attention seeking behavior. The cat, Boris, has been in this home for 15 years and really enjoys sleeping in the sunshine. The cats in the cat tree, hi. So in this one, we are gonna get a chance to do the position of your, where your focus is. And the dog is at the bottom looking up. The puppy wants to make a new friend. The cat doesn't need or want a new friend. However, he could be convinced depending on how convincing the puppy is. Let's see, take it away. Let's start with the puppy. Find out who wins out. Not to say, you are allowed to use English. Add the English to your to your uh, animal language. I'm sorry about that. Oh dear, I prefer barking. Uh, <laughs> this place has all sorts of interesting things to play with, and things that move, and things that roll. <gasps> Oh, I think I'm going to like it here. Oh, <laughs> this you is can't so sleep funny. about three fourths of the time. <laughs> I need to get some shut eye, but thanks for asking. Oh, but, oh, I, I, won't you play with me, please? Mm. please? I think I'd better get a root canal. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I'd rather go to the dentist. I'd rather have teeth extracted. No oh, way. Oh, 
That hurt. That oh, hurt me. I'm sorry. Oh, I just want to be your friend. No, I can't I help you. Really, no, I can't. Just, 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 I want to. It's so lonely. I'm just new here. <clears throat> Here's oh. what I'm worried about. Whenever you're around, you lick, 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 lick. I don't need any dog saliva on my face. Thank you. I can't. I know. I can't hold my liquor. (laughs) (laughs) I have a character, but that's not funny. (laughs) Well, well, you you, you seem like a a nice enough cat. I think we could get to know each other. (laughs) And words might have fleas. Can can I just cuddle up next to you here? You can sleep with your head on my body. It's nice and warm. What part of your body exactly? Mm, Whatever you want, up on my shoulder. That's a nice place. It could be worse. Mm -hmm. I just want to. I just want to be at home here. If I get too friendly, I'm afraid that the other cats will ostracize me for being uncat like. Oh. All right. <laughs> scene. We'll call it there. Guys, you can I, I can come back on screen with, along with these two. Nice job. Way to commit to your characters and going for it. And and even through the laughter, that was fabulous. I, I love the body language, Judy. You're you chased your tail once. I saw that. And <laughs> and uh Boris, you were just kind of looking looking down there. I like I like that a lot. Uh, and who who <laughs> thinks funny. who won who won on that? Did the dog or the cat win? I have my own opinion. Write write what you think in the chat. Hmm, it's a tough one. Oh, we got mixed feelings. Oh. I don't know. I found that puppy awfully convincing. I, I, I know that Terry just wanted to shut it out, but but oh, that puppy was so sweet and just wanted to be friends. Oh, so the fabulous job, guys. Thanks for coming on first and being brave. Way to <laughs> pave the way for success for even more people. All right, Rebecca, you can introduce the next one. Yes, and we are hoping to get in at least two more of these before we send you off on your way today. I know that we have one volunteer, Tom Olson. Tom, would you mind raising your hand using the raise the hand feature at the bottom so we can spotlight you? And then, of course, Tom needs a, I just call this improv, character partner. Tom needs a a character partner. So we have Thomas Olson. And then we have Shiva. Awesome, Shiva. Let's bring on Shiva. Great. We'll have you go ahead and unmute yourselves. Let me set up your scenario. Shiva, your name at this point is Petunia. Petunia, because it's sort of your nickname. You love flowers so much. You are, you both live in a small town. You're you're essentially neighbors. Petunia, you are president uh, and very proud of this, by the way, of the Garden Society. And your garden is your pride and joy. You're out there all the time watering your flowers, your petunias, everything else. Now you have this neighbor who's a little bit eccentric. This is what you you like him. You like him. And his name is Eustance, Eustance. And so I'm not sure what part of the United States you're from. I'm sure you'll let us know. Eustance has a ferret for a pet, not a dog, no, not a cat, a ferret. And one day while he's out in his yard, working on the yard with his ferret, his ferret escapes, crawls over the fence, and he's roaming the neighborhood neighborhood trying to find his pet ferret. And of course, we'll learn the, the ferret's name probably. However, you have the water running, Petunia, and it's very loud, big hose, and you think he says parrot, not ferret. And that is where the excitement begins. So we'll set you up. Petunia, you're in your yard, taking care of your flowers, watering. And of course, uh, Eustons, you're going to be panicked, you know, trying to find this parrot. So Eustons, you will start off the scene with your question to Petunia and go. Oh, hey there, Petunia. Have you, have you, uh, a chance uh noticed anything unusual in your garden this morning just my flowers houston well 
enjoying my flowers this morning. None of them, none of them, uh, not dirt flying everywhere, no, uh, no bloody remains or anything. Oh, you mean your ferret or your bird? What is um, I'm looking, yeah, I'm looking for my, my ferret. Uh, I'm looking for, uh, I'm looking for him. He got out and, uh, I don't, I don't know where he could be at. Have you, you know, seen him? I did not have not seen him, but I do not want to have him come into my garden. Well, I'm afraid it, it looks like I he love my flowers. Be there. You see, there's a hole under the fence. It looks like he went that away. Uh, I'm sorry about this petunia, but, uh. He uh he can be a little dangerous when he's off his meds, and uh, frankly, I don't I don't think he took them this morning. And I'm going to jump in here really quick, Shiva, and give you some quick direction. Remember, you keep thinking he says parrot, which would be you know not on the ground, maybe in a in a tree or something like that. Okay, thank so, you. Yes. Okay, so go ahead and take it from there. Why would it make a hole if then it's flying and eating my flowers? Well, flying, he gave that up a long time ago. He lost his license. So uh, I don't flying. It has Good golly. Did you see him in a tree? Is he up in your tree? Normally he likes rooting around down in the ground, but my, my you are saying it has strong legs. He got strong legs? Yeah, he's got pretty strong Muscle. legs. I mean he tore up the couch real good before he got out. They, they have skinny legs. No, they not not the uh, not Beastie Boy. He's he's uh, he's he's a little monster. He's got some he's got some rough legs. Oh, you think he's up in a tree? You think he's was he on your roof? Oh God, did he get in your roof? Because he'll go in them uh, them vents. You get him up in the attic, it'll be terrible. You know uh, you're we'll gonna have to pay for this. You know uh, you have buy me more flowers, and I am part of the committee of the Garden Society, and he, he, I am going to take it up with the big people. I understand. I understand. Society's wonderful, Petunia. We love your flowers. Uh, I'm just uh, looking for my my boy, and, my pet. He, and let's wrap this up with with Petunia. You finally understand it is not a bird. It is okay. So let's we'll bring this to a close with sort of the big aha moment. What are you talking about? Is well, is, so my my <laughs> ferret, my ferret. He's uh, he's kind of like a weasel, only smaller and cuter. Oh. Well, a little cuter. This whole time, I thought you were talking about a bird. Oh my! Oh God. no! Standing man. Now, although all right, and, and one last sentence, and we'll bring it to a close, Thomas. No, well, I, I was going to bring up the parrot next, though he did get out too. Oh. <laughs> Excellent. End scene. See, I said he was eccentric. He's got <laughs> his parrots and ferrets. Oh my gosh. That was excellent. Both of you. And it is, you know, it is a, a, a bit of a challenge sometimes when, when there is a, um, a, a co controversy or conflict to keep it building and keep it in the, in the positive. Right. But I, I think you both did an exceptional job. And Thomas, I can tell you've done some acting. Yeah, yeah, you have a bit of yes. improv. Yeah. Yes, improv. Yes, excellent for both of you. It's great, get, great to see you both getting out of your comfort zone and building something together. Let's give this team a hand, the parrot ferret team. <laughs> that was fabulous. So now I need two more volunteers. Okay, guys, you are at an airport. Let me give you some names. Judy S, you're going to be honey. And Kim, you're going to be Danielle. And that's how you say it, Danielle. All right. Okay. Honey, you're at the airport. You're running late for your flight. Person in front of you, Danielle, can't find her ID and has a meltdown at the counter. She's asked to step aside and you feel obliged to help. At the risk of missing your flight, you have an empathetic approach to the person. And you say that's where you're gonna start. You just begin. I'm beginning. Okay. Correct. Oh, oh, ma'am, ma'am, can I help you at all? I, I know her. 
my name is Danielle and I cannot find my passport and I must get on this plane. How can you help me? Here's my bag. Here's my bag. Help me, please. My passport's here. Oh, Danielle, I will help you. And my name is Honey. So let me help you look through this bag and see if I can find it here. And you look in another bag because we are all trying to make this flight. So Honey, here, oh, let me look. I do declare you are the sweetest lady, lady anywhere. What can I do? What can I do? I'll look in, I'll look in my suitcase. Here, take my purse. Take my purse. You can okay. have my purse, honey. Okay, Danielle, Danielle, you just take a big breath while you're looking. Slow down, calm down. It will help you look better. And I will also be looking calmly for your ID. Okay. Oh, oh, look at this. You didn't tell me to let out my breath. I think I yes. might take okay. that's good. Well, okay. oh your purse. Oh, here's your wallet. Hmm. Uh, oh, Kleenex, Kleenex. Mm-hmm. Oh, a chocolate. They're bomber. calling. My dear honey, you best get on that plane. I think you should get on that plane. Honey, honey, oh, well, they're closing the gate. Honey, they're closing. Oh no, I think we can both make it. Look, let's look just just two more minutes, okay? okay. Just two more minutes. We'll look. Oh, Here what it else? Is. I put it in my oh. bra. Danielle! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fantastic! Hi. Danielle, I'm so happy for you. Now, I did notice a chocolate bar in your bag. But do you think I could have that? I'm feeling a little peckish. Yes, my dear honey. Sweet candy for my girl, honey. My name is Danielle, um, and and I do say that you are the sweetest honey around. I appreciate you. Where are you sitting? Would you like to sit next to me on the plane? There's no assigned seating. Come on, my <laughs> girl. I'll share your candy that. bar with you. Yes, let's do that. And scene. Well done, ladies. Way to find a solution. I appreciated that. And, and uh, Kim, I, I loved how you brought the hat and the scarf into your character. And Judy, you were using voice to uh, differentiate her, her from yourself. I also like the imaginary gestures, the building on each other's reality. Really nicely done. I thought that was very fun. Everyone, please give them a round of applause, virtual applause. Thank you both. That was exceptional. And Thomas wants to know if you found his ferrets meds in the bag. <laughs> Cause he apparently he really needs them. <laughs> All right. We are, we are rapidly coming to a close and think back to that one thing, whether you put it in the chat or just had it in mind, the one thing that you were hoping when you read the title and the description of our session today regarding dialogue and character, do you feel that you extracted that one thing for yourself, that you'll be able to take something new, something fresh, some courage, some inspiration forward in your next uh, opportunity to speak? If so, I'd love to see a yes in the chat. All right, now I'm going to ask a step more. Besides, yes, it's what, which is nice. I want to know what you're taking away. What are you going to do differently after watching us be screwballs and screw ups <laughs> on the screen so that you know that you can step forward courageously and make mistakes just like we can? Oh, so, courage to experiment. That's awesome. Yes. I love that. Courage. A little more courage. School days. Now you have a new angle. Yes, indeed. Yes. That, that's a way that you, you go back in time, you bring other characters to life, and suddenly it's, it's happening in front of your audience. An improv Toastmasters club. I know they exist out there, and uh, there's always room for more. Accents, leaving doubt at the door, taking risks. Yes. Yes. And Daniel, would you mind spotlighting Lindy alongside me for, the, for our last hurrah? This is great. Courage, take risks. Yes, there is no, there is no failure. There's only what holds us back from, from courage. That's all. So doubt at the door, step forward in courage, 
grab the gold rings of knowledge and experience and step firmly into the confidence zone. Every time we do this, we gain a little more confidence, we get a little more comfortable, and we, we allow our creativity to ignite more ideas. That's how, how it's done. Yes, so that's here's awesome. Our- and I just, I just want to say that, that um, now that now that it flew out of my head because I lost my ID and you know how that goes. Oh, I do, I do. <laughs> Well, I do know that one thing that you might have wanted to say, because we both wanted to say this, was to give a challenge to everyone here, Lindy. And you remember what that challenge was. So go ahead. Go ahead. I I really do want to challenge you to take that speech that you've done from the past. Someone mentioned one that they have done about school days. So think of your mind. What's a speech that you've done before that you can go back and revisit and change some of that narrative to dialogue? It will it will bring new life to it, I promise. And we'll challenge you. Oh, I know what I was going to say. You know, being in front of the camera, I think it's an amazing opportunity. Yes, it's gone on a long time, but this there are different skills working in front of a camera than working on stage. Go ahead and use it. Go ahead and use it to the maximum. Be brave, be bold, make a mess, and make your Toastmasters meetings a heck of a lot of more fun as as a result. So are you willing to are you willing to bring that? that speech to life, finding at least three places you can bring in a character or a line of dialogue. Are you willing, everybody? Raise, a, raise your hand virtually or in reality. Yes, yes, I see some commitment. Yes, oh, Tech Master is double willing, wonderful, John. Yes, okay, good. Now, 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 okay, step forward and let's hear the speech. No, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> joke. Okay. I just dropped the handout in the chat for all of you to please download that. And we are going to take a vow together today. This is a silly vow that that we made up just to solidify everything and send you off on your way with your, with some courage. And uh, Lindy, why don't we, we ping pong these sentences of our, of our silly vow. Everybody raise your right hand. Keep, you can keep muted. That's fine. But raise your right hand, whether you're muted, whether your camera is on or not, go for it. First line is I, and you say your name, I, Lindy, do solemnly vow. I'm looking for lips to move. I, Judy, do solemnly vow. To use dialogue now. To use dialogue now. now. Oh, my turn. So my speeches have wow. So my speeches have have wow. wow. Then I'll take a bow. Then I'll take a bow and go milk a cow. And go go milk the the cow. (laughs) Thank you so much for spending this day, this morning with us. And remember, today is Dialogue and Diversity Day, and it's been a pleasure to spend it with you. Thank you for your energy and your attention. Really appreciate it.